Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to teach you how to mix color to match a certain object, you know, like a household object. And the purpose of this, you know, it may seem like a little bit of a, a waste of time at first, but the purpose of this is to train your eye and your brain to see color and then to be able to reproduce that color. And if you can you learn to do that more quickly, your paintings will actually improve and you, certainly your experience will improve. So I'm going to be focusing on that today. Let's jump right into the video. Now, before we actually start mixing color, I want to tell you what I've got up here. This is just my plein air easel. In case you're wondering, I haven't seen that. I just thought it'd be easier to do a tabletop layout. And these are oil paints. I got my little quarter inch flat brush to start with. I've got some paper towels here standing by. Now our colors today are titanium white, Prussian blue, ivory black. So those two colors are different there. That's blue, that's black. There's burnt umber, sap green, that's yellow ochre, Hansa yellow, and are Naptal red. However, you could use cad red, cad yellow if you wanted to. They're virtually the same thing. I think the transparency, these are a little bit more transparent, not much of a difference. Let's start by painting our old oak leaf, a dried leaf. And what's nice about this is it's fairly uniform in color. You don't have to do stuff that's uniform in color. You can pick a color within an object. But I think, at least for the sake of this lesson, it's easier to kind of see what we're shooting for if it's fairly uniform in color. I'm thinking yellow ochre. Check this out. Yellow ochre. I'm thinking little umber for sure white. Those three. That's going to get me close. Do we have to add a little red? A little um, of our Hunza yellow? Maybe. Do we have to add a little black? Maybe. And I'm going to show you the process. All right. Take some, take some white. And take a little bit of umber. These are oil paints if I didn't mention it. You could do this just as well in acrylics. The difference would be that your acrylics dry just a little bit darker. So if you're going to practice, you know, practice in the one that you paint with the most. Very similar, though. If you can mix one, you just may have to lighten it up a little more. So there you go. That is yellow ochre, burnt umber, and white. Now, that color is similar. It's definitely too light. I'm going to take some of my yellow ochre and add to that. I'm, see, I'm going little bit by little bit. As you just evaluate your color, you're, okay, what is that missing? Well, this leaf... I feel like we may end up having to pull some red in. I'm about three shades lighter here, so I've got to darken that color. You can test your color up on your leaf, but I'm not close enough to do that yet. You can do this with literally any object around the house. I just grab the leaf because it was convenient. I thought it would be appropriate for landscape. Okay, so I'm, all I'm doing is I'm adding in brown, this, you know, I'll just call them brown, yellow, green. You know what I mean. Burnt umber. Yellow ochre. You can see what I'm doing. That's another reason why I have this tabletop shot today. Okay, that is to me very close. Yeah, that's close. We need to go a little bit more into the yellow. You'll notice I'll, I'll go one way and I'll, I'll oh, and I'll have to correct going the other direction. You know what I mean? If you were painting and you were trying to match a photograph, you're close enough. You wouldn't have to go any further. Can I get that closer to that leaf? Maybe. I'm going to keep trying. That's, that's part of the, it's, it's, it's a lesson for you and it's a challenge for me. I want to see how close can I actually paint and get it nearly perfect. Of course, then your pile, you know, you don't mix it totally. I'm going to try to mix it thoroughly here. Let me go just a little more umber, a little more yellow ochre. Just do small piles when you're testing. That way you don't waste a lot of paint, you know, try because you're going to end up having the piles going to grow as you correct. And that's just true in all forms of painting. That's not just this lesson. Oh, that's close. You know what it needs? It needs just a little touch of red. You see this? Because of that gray, I'm just, it's, it's cool. See how this is warm and this is cool. They're basically the same brown. It's just, this is cool. That's warm. So let's try this out. What's going to happen if we add the tiniest little bit of red? Well, that's closer. You see how, I mean, do you see how little red I picked up? I mean, virtually nothing. Virtually nothing. I'm going extremely slowly trying to get this just right so i don't have to uh, uh, go back and correct that's pretty close it needs more uh, needs more yellow ochre quite a bit more i'm sorry i don't want to block shot there okay that was a lot more yellow ochre just feel like it really needs that and it needs a little more red now there are many many colors very subtle colors within this leaf you can see them some of the light is just the light shining there the highlights physical highlights from the light, but there are, there are actually different colors. There's spots of darker and lighter. So you kind of have to just 
you know, squint your eyes and just get an overall color. In fact, when I squint my eyes and I look at that, that looks virtually identical. There's my paint spot right there. Hold on. I'm trying to point and look at the camera right there. See it? And there's the color of the leaf. There's the color of my paint splotch. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. Uh, I think it's a little more red. Just a little more umber, maybe. Might not have should have done the umber. Let's see. Yeah. That's another swatch that's pretty close. Wow. Let's see if I can hold that up for you to get a better look. Kind of hard to film something so reflective, you know? This leaf is shinier than it seems. Where did I put? I can't. Okay, there it is. Right there. <laughs> yeah, you can even just see with my brush on the, on the leaf there. It's, oh, ignore my little blob there, but yeah, it's pretty much the same. Now, the next thing I want to try to match is just this old rose leaf. I just picked it from the garden here. And it's, it's spring kind of coming out of winter into spring here. So I don't have, I wish I had a big oak leaf we could do, but this is a, this will work. This is a nice bright green. I'm ignoring the lighter back. You could do that if you wanted to, but, and it's got a nice red stem here of which I'm not going to be doing <laughs> just matching the green part of the leaf. Let's do it. I've washed out my brush. And so it's good and clean and dry. And you know, that's nice. That helps me a little bit. Real world scenario, your brushes are never clean. They're just always got a little something in them. And, uh, and we may use some of that color. Let's start here. I'm thinking, put that up there and see what you think. I'm thinking for sure on the yellow, probably some red, if I had to guess. Maybe yellow ochre, for sure, obviously sap green. Possibly blue, I have no idea. It depends on if it comes out warm or cool. And maybe black, maybe not. I'm starting with my yellow. I know it's got yellow. And I know it's got some sap green. So let's just do that. I was about to grab yellow ochre, but rather than just grabbing the yellow ochre, I'll tell you why I'm going to grab it. This is so neon. See that neon? And I want to soften that neon, but I'm not ready to add um, blue, black, brown. I don't want to add any of that yet. I want to soften, not that blue would soften it. Brown or black would. I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow ochre to it. I just feel like it needs it. Okay, I might have added too much, so I'm going to go back with my sap green. Go back with my Hansa yellow. Look at that. We're starting to get there. We're starting to get there. Okay. Obviously, we're way too bright, so I'm going to begin to darken it with these three colors. You know what's funny is it's, it's more on the yellow ochre side than I originally thought. A little more sap green. You can see sap green. Oh, I'm just going to use sap green for my, my leaves. Not always the right choice, you know. I mean, yeah, you got to include it, but like you can't just pick it up and use it because it's not quite right. I hope this is coming across in, in, the, in the camera here in person. I can tell you that this is coming out a little as I get, look at this, as I get paint all over my arm. Let's, uh, let's wipe that off. I'm typically really good about not getting paint on myself. A little bit of umber. Oh, I was going to tell you, this is too cool. I can tell you this is too cool. That was a bit warmer. I'm seeing that because there's that red in the vein. Some of that red is, is also present in that leaf in the green part. And, and, and it's a warmer green. That was a cooler green. Obviously, sap green is, is fairly neutral, but then these warm yellows warmed it up. That's, that's looking good. It's, we're getting there. It definitely needs, let me flatten that out because you're part of that dark you're seeing. There's a shadow. If I flatten that to where you don't see a shadow, we're getting really close. I want to get 100% though. I don't want. 98. That's 98 right there. You know what it needs? You know what that needs? That needs just the littlest bit, pinpoint, tiniest bit of blue. That's blue right there. See how much blue I put in? <laughs> Not much. That's what it needs. It needs just a little tiniest touch of blue. It may need just a little tiny touch of white. Why would you add blue right there? It's because as I'm looking at this, I, I, I think I, I made this a little too warm with the burnt umber. I went a little too far. That blue will bring it back and also will give me that rose color green, that, that blue. Often when we paint rose leaves, I will have blue in it because it very much has that blue feel. I just went overboard. Oops, I took that just a little too far. Oh, yeah, you can clearly see that. I went. Did you see how, did you see how little paint it took to make that big pile go too far to the blue? What do I do? I'm going to put in just a little drop of red. I'm actually excited about this because the red, so now you've got a purple 
I'm mixing purple within the color, right? With no difference if you just mixed it and then put it in. Essentially, all I've done is add purple to this mix. Getting there. Now, do you see? Can you see what it is? I'm, I'm almost a little too dark. And now I'm beginning to go more of a green and I'm starting to lose the yellow. Now, now all of a sudden, that leaf looks like it's more yellow. This looks like it's uh, more blue. See that? I'm going to take some of my yellow ochre. Some of my Hansa yellow. Mix those. Oops. I want to block your view. We're close. It's 99.5% there. What's the last 0.5%? I mean, a tiniest, tiniest, tiniest. Do I dare go for blue again? <laughs> I want it to be perfect. Blue. And then I'm going to take most of it out. This is silly at this point. I mean, we're there for the sake of the, for the challenge, right? But, and then I want to go just a light, tiniest little bit of white. It needs just a little lighter. There we go. Test it. Yeah, it's actually a little too light. Is it? Or is that just the light shining on it? No, I think that's just the light shining on it. Well, no, I don't know. In person, it looks perfect. In the, in the monitor there, it doesn't look quite right. Let me darken it. Just a little, little sap green there. Just a little tinge of umber. Okay. That's it right there. You can see it shining there as I move it because it's wet oil paint. But when I pull that leaf up and it's no longer catching the light, but it's just a neutral uh, light there, you can hardly see where I put the paint on it. I'm going to say that is the right color. So you saw every step that it took to get these random paints to match that rose leaf exactly. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this quick lesson on color mixing. And I just want to remind you that you can check out our full length DVDs as well as the brushes and the paint that I use over on the website. Of course, the link is in the description. And I want to give a big thanks to our Patreon members. And you can find more information about that also in the description. Thanks for watching.